Hi, it's been a while. Today's video is brought to you by TikTok comment section discourse surrounding Roe reports and her assault, a three-day binge of FD signifier videos, and these two books. Now, this video is not going to have any insight specifically in regards to what happened to Roe, nor the disparaging rhetoric that was leveraged against her and Black women in general with regard to whether or not black men should protect black women that they don't know. If you want that insight, feel free to swing over to my TikTok and watch these videos. What I do want to pontificate on is something that I noticed within the discourse because every video that I came across that defended Roe or tried to disprove this notion of the dynamics between black men and black women that they don't know there was a specific niche of people that i could only assume to be Tariq nasheed minions that would come into the comment section and say something to the effect of i don't understand why you guys care so much she's not even black she's somali and the attacker isn't even black either and not only should you decenter her from the conversation you should center us and our feelings because it's us foundational black american men who are being attacked for something that we didn't do i can only assume most rationally thinking black people would hear something like that and just be like nigga what the fuck but their presence being so consistent really stuck with me and then it dawned on me why? Because just a couple of weeks prior to what happened to Roe, a Ethiopian kid went viral for vehemently saying that Ethiopians are not black. So the first light bulb went off for me insofar as realizing that these two ideologies are two sides of the same coin. And for me, they're equally ridiculous because... I'm black and I have eyes. But as the days progressed with the conversation and I got deeper and deeper into my FD signifier binge, in one of his videos in regards to bread tube and its toxicity, he mentions the book Elite Capture, which first reminded me that I have the audiobook and I've only gotten a chapter in, so I should probably get back on my studies. But also the takeaway that he highlights in that video from the book is about us being aware of who has ownership of the narrative and who benefits from people believing this narrative. And the second light bulb went off because <clears throat> for both the foundational black American who's anti-African immigrant and the African immigrant who is anti-black American, they initiate these conversations with this assumption that the white supremacist propaganda that they wage against each other is just a fact, right? And the only thing that needs to be sussed out is who is and isn't black. And I think that shit is so disjointing that we kind of forget how irrational this is. So while I was reading the book Uncommon Wealth, I'm noticing how interconnected anti-blackness and the in enterprise of colonialism really truly was in our history. The third light bulb went off in my brain. If anyone is truly confused about who is black and who isn't, you can always trust that white supremacy will let you fucking know soon enough. And if we just survey the world, right, we can see evidence of this. Sometimes in the micro and how states or countries treat its black population, but also in the macro with how the international conglomerate of the global north treats predominantly African or black nations. We are all at the bottom of whatever given socioeconomic structure. So it's kind of just like, you niggas don't make sense. So who really benefits from just this assumption, this given fact that 
black Americans aren't African or African migrants aren't black. If you guessed white supremacy and white supremacist institutions, you'd be correct. And I think that's something that we really do need to take account of when we're going into conversations with people like this because they are going to require you to suspend your understanding of reality just so that you can have the conversation in the first place and if you have to suspend your reality and the reality of the rest of the motherfuckers on the planet then maybe these people aren't worth arguing with <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Maybe we shouldn't do a three-day, 400-some-odd thread of discussion with ideologies that are demonstrably untrue. That might save us some stress. And considering how the world is turning, we need to save as much of that shit as possible.